I look at mixing and like a, like at least the way the workflow works for us is there's a prep stage, there's a vocal cleanup stage, and then when you start the mixing and the vocals are like mostly DS and clean, there's not too many plugins going on. Start working on the 808. I work 808 up. All, Wait, let's let's slow, let's slow that down. Let's, so the prep stage, vocal cleanup, and then mixing. What is what is involved in the prep stage? Prep stage is getting uh, the 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 everything together, getting the stems all the right parts and the different get, versions get, of get, sessions and so it starts with okay, this song is on the project, okay. Then the session comes to me that uh, we we make a chart who the producer is, what the name of the two track is, and then it's then it's a mission to get the stems, okay. And that <laughs> is a fucking mission in itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now. It's great because now I have a little bit of a name. I can hit up a producer and be like, "Bro, you got, you got the sense. number one album in the country. You, you got the, you got it going now." <laughs> so I I can get a producer on the phone and like get yeah. stems. But by, before it was re- like when you just have to rely on the A and R to do it because they don't give a shit. He does give yeah. a shit. He's like, "Fuck it, like you know." I was like <laughs> like a couple of mixes. Now that we didn't even have songs in the album that we didn't even have the session for it. It, it was worked off a mp3 with the, someone else's vocals and then we couldn't get the session i was like yo can we get the session can i fix it he's like why the album's out and i was like yeah but it but you know we can always swap it he's like, no one cares besides you and i was like nah but still that's you not know? true <laughs> yeah that's uh shit. But so the prep the prep stage and then so, yeah, you're going the through and stage. doing clean up doing doing ga- doing de-clicking yeah uh, and, so, and sometimes sometimes the vocal cleanup and all of this shit happens before the prep also Mm-hmm. While it's in their fucking template, we just uh, bypass their shit because it runs quick. You know, once you start getting it into like other my my stuff, when you like by the end of my session, if you hit play, it's gonna take a second for it to play. Not because all all this is a really important thing with delay compensation. Just like with using so much parallel shit, you just gotta always watch for phase and then make sure that things are always cool. double checking. Because Pro Tools can yeah, sometimes be a little squirrely with that stuff. Hell yeah, 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 for sure. That that's a big thing that 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 was the reason that I went to Avid Interfaces because I met someone from Avid two years ago and I was like, yo, I, I'm sick of using this hardware insert. You know, with, with an Apollo, you have to tell if you're using analog inserts and stuff. You tell you have to calculate the shit and all. They were like, the only way that goes away is if you use a complete avid architecture. You have to buy our shit. Yeah. Which makes I was sense. like, fuck it. I was sense. like, yeah, fuck it. it. Okay, cool. We're going to do it. Yeah. Got to do it. Got to do it. Um, and yeah. It was so also because, bo- uh, sorry, oh. go ahead. No, go ahead. Please, please. I, I feel like, like for me, like I've been recording for so long and I was at a, a really, like I was record. like I feel like I was at a, a, a very, I was here in my recording career, but like here in my mixing career, and I kind of wanted them to level to to match up. And the reason I was doing really well for my recording career allowed me to get, and not to say you need gear or you need stuff, but you need a decent set of speakers, you need a decent room, you need a decent place. We to talk about monitoring all the time. Like you got to know what you're hearing. Exactly, you know, and like now that I've had to like go and like work in different places and shit, it just really bothers me when I'm not you know comfortable or just I just have like what I'm yeah. used to. Um, so you got the vocal cleanup, you got prep, then vocal cleanup, and then you get into the mixing. Sorry, and then we, we talk exactly. about weights and shit. Yeah. And then yeah, and then yeah. So then we usually we'll 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 get a decent of a mix going. Work work the 808 in. Like start with 808. I always start with 808. And at some point, I'm gonna put the build the mix bus on. But at at this point, there's nothing going on in the mix bus. I'm just focusing on the actual sound. Uh, with the 808, there's um, like I'll work on the actual 808 sound, and then I I usually always have at least one or two parallels uh one would probably if if it, if it is lacking i'll put a voice of god as a parallel not on the actual sound and i have like an actual hardware unit that i use for that um that just like if someone wants to give you that oomph from an 808 and that 808 there it doesn't have it it's usually coming from there there's some songs that we've actually it put like a triggered a kick at the front of the 808 just to get that just punch to add out. a little yeah. bit of punch to it yeah with, with, with the addictive um and then you obviously got to go and like you know fade up the the 808 so it just doesn't interesting like, so you so you will sometimes take an 808 mm-hmm. and just add a little bit of an extra punch sample at the top just very, so it yeah a little yeah very subtly very, very, yeah very sometimes if, if it needs it uh, but with Wheezy and all, you don't really need that stuff. Even the voice of God, you don't really need with Wheezy's. His, yeah, his Wheezy, Wheezy's, I imagine Wheezy's yeah. stuff sounds pretty good at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Dude um, knows how to make shit. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So yeah, there's that. And then there's always like a, a mid-level saturation, usually like a, an, an amp or something on there. Uh, cut it through. Uh, and then I and use... Is that to get that like, I mean, one of the questions, and it's the question that people ask all the time. Um, 
how do you get the 808 to speak on an iPhone, on laptop, That's it, yeah. on that sort of thing? Is is that so? There's like. You have, you have the super low end and the sort of higher harmonics. Is that that's the amp thing you're talking about? Exactly, yeah, the amp thing, and that that usually just helps it cut like for small speakers, for iPhones, all that kind of shit. And I I feel like with with the voice of God, it's really easy to get carried away, and that's where like I really like my amphions because they 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 handle low end well, but the minute you push it where it, it's not meant to go, they start flubbing. So I always know when I'm mm. going too hard. That's a, that is that is a, such a subtle, flubbing is it's, the right word too. Where exactly. It's just a little too much and all of a sudden you lose it. Exactly. And it's not always, it won't happen on, it'll just happen on certain notes. It'll just happen on the super low notes. So then a lot of times we're going in, getting those notes, building them up and then using some extra saturation on, on just the super no load or whatever, just to so you can hear that. But you know, it's it is a lot of a lot of volume automation. So sorry, well. we just put a put a put a marker there. You will actually, when you're using harmonic distortion of some sort on the 808s to get them to speak, you you might actually use different levels of harmonic distortion on different notes within the song. Some, yep, sometimes because, yeah, because yeah. it might sound it's it's, it's similar. It seems similar to because um, a, a lower note effects and things like that. Exactly, like on the vocal. Lower, a lower note might need a little more saturation than the high note because you're not going to hear more stuff like that or, or whatever, you know, just again, it's everything is like, like, I, I, like, I hate saying like, this, this is, this is it. This is what I do. Every song is different. Every mix is yes. different. Yes. The, the, the few of them, like there's a general architecture and a general workflow that, that, that gets followed because that's just, you know, how I feel like. I work well and I've been working well for long enough. And, and, and if, if there's other people, if, if like a race starts something or I start something like, like both of us need to do the same thing. You yep. know what I mean? It doesn't matter who, which one of us is doing it, but the same, the same things need to get done. And I feel like because we have a, a set structure, yeah, uh, it just, it, 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 it works out that way. And then, you know, well, 808 up a lot of, you know, get the vocals the last step is usually vocal effects and then i'm i'm, I'm doing vocal rides at the end to uh post compression everything all the click in and stuff is pre 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 everything else and then like right at the end there's a lot of volume trim happening and stuff that's amazing man